What's up guys? So today's project is going to be an advanced PCV slash upgraded PCV system. Um, <clears throat> my system will be uh, a little different than most people's systems just because I will be routing the outlet back to the exhaust. Um, so I just want to go over the things that you're going to need here. You're going to need a catch can with at least two fittings to go into hoses. These are fancy fittings, don't even worry about them. You can use the stock ones right here, these barbed ones, but I'm just making it look a little nicer for now. You're going to need uh, so a catch can, two of those fittings. Uh, you're going to need a check valve of some sort. This is 5 8 barb, 5, five eighths barb, which will work on the 10 an lines that we're going to be working with. A flapper delete fitting, which is just straight through and through, which is why you're going to need that, that check valve. Uh, an upgraded RB PCV valve. Um, some other, I think Burger Motorsports does one too, but I got the RB one. And again, some fittings to attach to uh, wherever you're going to be, like, you know, attaching to. So, for example, for me, I'm going to the exhaust, so that's going to fit there. And this one will be fitting off of the flapper. So you'll at least need, you know, one of these. Um, it doesn't have to be this fancy one. It can be, again, barbs. Barbs work just fine. One other thing I forgot to mention that uh, we're going to need is 10 an hosing. Um, stainless steel, nylon braided, or just normal heater hose will work. Um, anything works really, uh, as long as it uh, can hold a little bit of temperature. Um, and it's uh, 5 8 in diameter. So this is a 5 8 and 5 8 works with 10 an just fine. So uh, no need to get different lines or anything. So the place that I'll be mounting my catch can um, it's got this really nice little lip that works very well on the hard booster line, thanks to Jake Ulch. Um, I'll show you in a second. Put my phone down first real quick. It'll be going right here on that line. Okay, so here we are. This is pretty much how it's going to sit. Um, I will get a 45 degree one here just so it lines up better and looks prettier, but for now this will do. As you can see, it fits perfectly on here. It barely, barely even moves. And uh, what's great is it's movable, you know, so if you want to just remove it or something, you know, you can just pull it right off the line and do whatever you need to do. So uh, let me just tell you something about this catch can real quick. This one in particular has three ports, right? This is the inlet. Uh, sorry, sorry. This is this is the outlet and there's two inlets, right? So this is a this is a inlet, inlet, outlet. So the outlet will be going to wherever you're recircling back into. For me, that's going to be this exhaust bung right there. For most people, it's going to be back to the intake uh, intake um, tract or whatever, which is on the stock car. It's about there with the that long intake tube. So the first step that I'm going to be doing, or the first two steps, is removing the stock uh, flapper and the stock PCV valve. I'll do the PCV valve first. Um, I, I typically like to remove that fuel rail just so I don't do anything stupid and break something. So you're going to need a 14 to remove the fuel rail. And uh, remember that the system is pressurized. So it's a, good idea, it's a good idea to put a rag right here and another rag right down there when you loosen these up. Alright, so as you see here, I put a rag here and a rag down there. And we're going to go ahead and loosen this up. Okay, so there's the fuel rail removed, as you can see. And now we're going to go ahead and remove this valve. Use a 13 for this step. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, skip to the part when I get it out. Because there's a little trick you can use to get this, this stock one off. Alright, so at this point, we've got the PCV valve loose and out. Set that aside. And you'll see that there is... Let's see if I can... Oh man, I can't get any light on here. Let me get the flashlight. There's this little nipple, right? 
right there. Now you can see it. So what we're going to do is we have to take it out, but we don't want to crush that. So let's see if I can do this with one hand. I don't recommend doing this with one hand. We get a small drill bit and there's actually a hole in this nipple and we're going to put the drill bit in the hole. Just like that. But this one wiggles a little too much. Although, since we are getting a new PCB valve, it wouldn't matter too much. But I'm going to go get a slightly thicker one and put it in the hole. Okay, so now I got a thicker drill bit in the nipple. And now we're going to use some pliers on the plastic part of the nipple and just pull straight out. Uh, I don't think I can do this with one hand, but uh, I'll try. Just got some needle nose pliers here. And now let's see if this is gonna work. It's a little difficult. I pull straight out. Ah, uh, there we go. And then that's pretty much exactly what you're doing. Okay, so the reason why we're replacing this is this one tends to leak after some age and some some increased boost, and this is how it sits in there. We're gonna dump that, and we're gonna use the new upgraded PC one, PCV valve from RB. Let's see, I can't really do this with one hand. <laughs> Just gonna have to put a little force in there and get the seat nicely. And uh, now that's ready for installation. But first, in order to make it a little easier on the flapper part, we're gonna leave this out, and we're, all, we're gonna install it at a later time. So now we're going to get this flapper off, and there's a couple videos. Um, it's really a pain to get off the stock one. Uh, what I use is, let's see, like these these flatheads. I use a couple flatheads. I, use, I have to use two at a time, so I won't be able to record it. But I use a flathead and just some other kind of a, like a little pick tool or something. Maybe something like this. Uh, but I'll, I'll explain what you have to do. All right, so as you can see here, this is what we're taking off this flapper assembly, and it's held on by a couple of clips. There's one here, one at the bottom, one on the left, and one on the right. Essentially, you have to unclip like two or three of them at the same time in order to pull this sucker off. So honestly, you're just going to have to be messing with it, like just sort of slide this right here, put a little pressure on it, and you're gonna have to do it one at the bottom or one on the side and finagle it. But essentially this is what you're doing and you're gonna pull this whole flapper assembly off. Well, that was an absolute pain, but I did manage to get it off in one piece. If you do break these, um, quite sure you can get a new one for like 30 bucks, but uh, you won't need it if you do this, so. All right, so now we're going to install this. And uh, if you're looking at it from here, like from this angle, this pretty much just slips right on. And then you put this clip down, like those C retainer clips that are all around the car. Let's see if I can do this with one hand again. This is a little bit of a fit and make sure you have that O-ring in there. Should have a little O-ring in there. Yeah, it's right there. Take the clip, that C thing away. Right there. And then, like, like I said, we're gonna slide it right onto the uh, the uh, valve cover thing. So it's right here. I'm gonna focus on here. And uh, we're just going to push it straight on. It's gonna take a little bit of force and essentially what you're gonna do is that clip, that C retainer clip is going to go right here so it doesn't back itself out. So like this and you push it on. So now we're going to just put that retainer clip on like so and you're just going to push it, oh sorry, you're just going to push it down with some force and it'll lock itself in place. So that now it is nice and in place.
Now we're just going to go ahead and put the, the uh, upgraded PCB in. Exactly how we took it out, very simple. Um, make sure that O-ring is nice and lined up. And we're just going to screw it back in. Just like that. Make sure it's lined up and not cocked. And thread it in. So at this point, I'm just sort of test fitting the, uh, the fitting right here. This is that exhaust scavenger fun to a 90. I was just going to go right under these wires, come around, and then attach the catch gun, which will be right around this side. And here's the flapper that I was just testing out. So I've used a 45 right here, which will do just fine. Even a 90 would work. So uh, at this point, after test fitting, making sure everything is going to be fine, you can go ahead and uh, put your fuel rail back on. Again, this is a 14. Um, just I, I start by threading it on both sides just a tiny bit, and then tightening it like that. All right, so if you're doing an exhaust scavenger bung like me, uh, it's going to be very important that uh, this side it's pretty much uh, in like this, meaning it's in the in the way of the exhaust gases. This is the way it's gonna pull a vacuum. Now, ideally, it's best to be on a 45 degree, but since my pipe is angled like that, it'll still pull vacuum. As you can see, it goes in this way. This is how you wanna have it uh, when it's tight. And you adjust this, this little nut accordingly. What I did was I made a little mark with a Sharpie right here and that indicates that it is facing the front so I need to have that directly like that and make sure this is all tight and uh, that's how my setup will be. Uh, when you're at this point it's time to start doing your hoses and uh, you can like I said do regular heater hose or you can you can go with uh, some fancy hose like I have here. We get a better view at it. So this is going to be going like this. This attaches right there to the bung, and this side goes to the catch can, which is right there. In the middle, I have the check valve. Notice the arrow. It's in the flow of, of uh, how, how the airflow will go. So air cannot pass to the right, but it can only go to the, to the left. That's how you want to have it, and I have it on my exhaust side. Although um, I was told that you can have it on the, on the other hose too. So here's one of the hoses, and here is the second one. This one goes to the flapper. So I'm going to go ahead and install these and show you what it looks like after I'm practically done. Okay, so at this point, you can see I, I uh, blocked off one that I'm not using. That is uh, ill sewn in. The middle is an out, and the uh, other side is also an in. And the middle one is the out, so it goes to my exhaust, which is where the check valve is too. Now this does look pretty janky because I didn't put an AN fitting or anything on it, but I cut it in a position that it'll be right behind the valve cover so you shouldn't actually see it. If you do, ah, it's fine, whatever. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's done. As you can see, there's the outlet. It goes all the way around. Check valve is right there. You can barely see it. Into the out port of the catch can and then the in straight to the flapper.